G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we are having a look at the long-awaited Sagittario 2 video. This plane has taken 8.0 by storm, and for excellent reasons. The Sagittario 2 combines a whole bunch of excellent features, combined with some very deadly armament, and we're going to have a chat about what possibly could be made a little bit better. But uh, before we do that, I'd of course love to talk about our sponsor for today's video. This video is sponsored by Opera GX. Opera GX calls itself the world's first gaming browser, with features tailored specifically towards gamers, especially those who cannot afford powerful computers. Opera's GX control feature allows you to limit the amount of CPU and RAM usage by the browser, which is very useful for those on laptops or older CPUs trying to allocate as much of their processor as possible for gaming. I recently polled the community asking what resolution do you watch my videos at, and the most common response was something along the lines of, less than 1080p because my internet sucks. Opera GX actually has a feature to specifically help people with low internet speeds. Opera GX comes with the ability to limit its bandwidth usage, giving you a better experience while multitasking. Opera GX also comes with a hot tabs killer, can force pages to display in dark mode only, easy popouts for social media, and comes with a free rudimentary VPN. Opera GX is my default browser on my PC and has been for over 6 months, and I've been pleased with the feature set and the wealth of customization options available. But wait, hold up, there's actually more. Opera GX have actually integrated Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube Music into the browser, so you actually don't need to go to the website or download the Spotify app, making it that much more streamlined and that much more easy to access your favorite music. Opera have also implemented a quick import tool which allows you to import all of your settings from your previous browser to Opera GX, such as your browsing history, bookmarks, and cookies. Honestly, I'm just going to go off script real quick and just say Opera GX just has it all. It's literally got it all. It's got pretty much everything you want. And uh, these are actually new features that I had no idea about until a couple days ago. So Opera GX, it's just getting better. It really is. My personal favorite feature of Opera GX is its video pop-out feature, which allows you to watch any videos displayed in browser such as YouTube videos or Twitter live streams and place and resize them around your screen while allowing you to continue working on assignments or playing games. Opera GX is a browser I can genuinely recommend. Its features and customizations are unparalleled and best of all, it's free. So download Opera GX for free in the description below. Even if you try it out for 5 minutes, it helps the channel out greatly and allows me to fund upgrades such as the recent upgrade to my Ryzen 9 5950X. Thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Once again, thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Sponsors really do help the channel out in a massive way. And of course, for those of you who are wondering what the sponsor money might be going to, um, I just ordered a sort of camera setup so that we can potentially have some face cam towards the end of the video. I'd like to do that as a little bit of a sign off, but um, yeah, thank you very much for being so supportive about sponsors. Anyway, onto the Sagittario 2. This plane is a little bit strange. It's kind of got that sort of shark appearance and it is definitely very predatory. It's one of those planes that you really don't want to see in a match and um, that's kind of a bad thing. I have to admit, having an overpowered plane is shit. It's bad. It's just it's just terrible. And um, I'll take the time to explain it in a little bit. But essentially, the Sagittario is very fast for 8.0. Like 1,050 is is pretty damn fast. Uh, it also climbs well, so it's got a fairly decent climb rate, a fairly decent top speed, okay energy retention, and good turn. And that is where this plane lies in its uh, capabilities. You can basically do whatever the hell you want. You don't have anyone to to really step, look up to, or to anyone to really fear, except maybe the MiG-17 at uh, you know a full up tier. But that's pretty much it. This sits at 8.0 and should probably be 8.3, or dare I say 8.7. Now, this is more or less on par, in my opinion, with the sort of MiG-15 bis, MiG-17 type planes. Uh, it does do a fairly decent speed at sea level, 10, I think 45, something like that. Um, but it's basically at speeds that are comparable to the MiG-15 BIS at uh, sea level. It's got great guns too, by the way. It has 240 rounds of essentially Aidens, 
Now, these used to have like double the fire rate, uh, maybe about a week ago before it was apparently nerfed. Um, I don't really consider reducing the fire rate of uh, ridiculously fast firing Aidens uh, to regular Aidens to be a nerf. I consider that to be a buff because you actually have more uh, ability to conserve your ammunition and so you can get more kills. So it's not quite a loss for the Sagittarius. In fact, I would consider it to be a little bit more of a bonus. Now, the one thing this plane is actually fairly decent at is bomber hunting. Because of those 30 mils, you can very, very easily sit behind bombers, line them up, and take them out without much issue. And this is kind of what I'm going to do with this T-14 here. I'm going to line him up. He's turning, so he's probably not going to be using the guns that much. And I take him out pretty easily. That, that's, that's a pretty stock standard, easy kill. Using my quick bursts on uh, planes like the F-84G here, the F-84G being an attacker gets an air spawn, but it still doesn't really have enough to stand up to the might of the Sagittarius. Now, this F-86F, I'm not really sure why he's turning around. It looks like he's going to go for the full commit head-on, but because I'm able to cut on the inside, I'm going to full commit to that because there is absolutely zero way that he is going to be able to get guns on, and so, very easy kill. Now, once they're all done at the top, I'm confident enough to go down towards the deck, but I do spot SU-11, and I do spot a uh, an F-89. And the F-89 isn't so much of a problem. I can't really outturn it at low, low speeds, but at medium speeds, I can still sort of sit behind it if he isn't managing his throttle properly. The SU-11, however, um, he's a little bit more of a deadly target, and I do have to be a little bit aware of what he's doing. Uh, I believe he has better acceleration, but I'm not quite sure. I haven't had a really decent look at the SU-11. Um, and I haven't had many good dogfights against the SU-11 in this thing. But um, the SU-11 just decides that the deck is the answer, and the F-89B, well, I'm not too concerned about it. So I would rather go and help out some teammates. There is an Arado 234, which could be a C3, and he could be looking uh, for, some, for some juicy ground targets, it turns out. So maybe he's not much of a threat, but the F-84G here might be able to slot onto my friendly, and I'm going to go for him. Unfortunately, I do compress a little bit and unfortunately cannot line up the shots. SU-11 is coming back, but I'm going to use that speed that I built up in the dive to put it into a vertical and then roll back over. I do bleed a fairly decent amount of uh, speed here, but I have got myself a neat little bit of altitude process. Now, would I consider doing this in multiple dogfights? Probably not. Uh, maybe use this sparingly, but in this case, we are basically in a full down tier. That that is a 262. That is probably the most unlucky McDucky matchmaking you can possibly get. ME262, A1, U1, and compression happens again. Instead of uh, continuing through, I'm going to go for the vertical and get myself some distance behind the 262. Go again, roll over, and come back in for a fresh try. You can always do these types of things again. Now, the 262 has built up enough speed to evade me. And unfortunately, I'm not able to get my shots on a second go. I'm not going to sit behind him and spray, but I am going to try and get my guns on once more. The 262 rolls over, and I think, oh yeah, this is it. This is where I'm going to go get the kills. And unfortunately, he slams himself into the ground because people do that still. I mean, I've done that once, but never again. Never again. <laughs> So, quick head on with the SU-11, no dice like usual. SU-11s are surprisingly, uh, I don't know, but I don't know what's with SU-11s. They seem pretty damn po powerful, pretty damn potent. Maybe I should have a quick squeeze at it in the form of a video. But uh, the SU-11 unfortunately doesn't get anything with me in the head on. Um, but we have an F-89B who came from earlier. He's now down at the deck and low on speed. And there's an F-84 who's sort of lurking up at altitude behind me. And so he's now my primary focus. He's coming in behind me, and I'm going to cut in into his turn and then go vertical so that he has to try and pull. And basically, I'm trying to avoid him at every single cost. I go for the reversal and get myself a very beautiful critical hit. Not quite a kill, but, uh, you know, it, I'll take it. He's damaged his uh, fuel tank by the looks of it, or something in his engine. Um, and an F-84 with a damaged engine is, uh, is pretty much screwed. But you can see, I'm turning and burning. I'm not exactly playing conservatively in this plane. Yet, I'm still managing to keep a lot of my energy. The only thing that I'm really struggling with is this SU-11, and I think that's because I've basically got half the engines he's got. Uh, I, think, I think he's just got a bit of acceleration and energy retention, whereas I've got a bit more turning. Uh, I have heard that the SU-11 is uh, 
little bit too powerful for its battle rating, but uh, a little little bit of uh, cannon fire should put the end to that SU-11, um, despite the Sagittarius wanting to put him in the dirt too, but unfortunately, no kill for me, but definitely a nice little assist. What I found in the Sagittario is that there are so many of these things in the match ranker that it's hard to get more than two kills. Uh, I've had a lot of trouble getting some like really nice games to show you guys, but this particular plane is just so insane that pretty much everyone can get at least one or two kills. And for me, uh, it's a, a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. It's a bit of a double-edged sword in that case. You have a plane that is, in one case, easy to use, friendly, fun, it's got good characteristics all around, but on the other hand, you have a real potential for this plane to be overpowered, which, in my opinion, it is not exactly overpowered as such, as in its performance is not too high according to its real capabilities, at least from what I can gather, but this plane is certainly too powerful for its matchmaking. Sagittario 2 versus 262s, not very good. Sagittario 2 versus F-80A, not good. These types of planes really can't afford to be facing this Sagittario, and I think that this plane is more of a, uh, not Korean War era jet, but it is more suitable to fighting Korean War era jets, such as the MiG-15, the F-86 Sabre, uh, things like the Venom, I think this would be fairly good against. This plane can, like combines good energy retention, combines good guns, good turning, decent acceleration, good climb rate, good top speed. You have a bit of everything, and at this point, you get a plane that's either kind of meh or really damn good. And in this case, it's really, really damn good. So, we have our next battle here. This is a bit of a wash for the American team here. We have an A2D, and we have a lot of A2Ds in this matchmaker. We have one of them who is going to get critically hit by uh, some, some lovely cannons. And I'm just going to put it into a vertical. If this guy has bombs, there is no way in hell he's following me up. And I'm just going to roll over. I kind of feel bad because I'm basically bullying props. Um, although the A2D did do a lot of damage back in the day. So maybe it's maybe it's karma. Maybe it's a little bit of payback. Um, but regardless, it's a bit of a wash. There's just not much the A2D can do. He can probably turn, but it's not going to be very easy for him. And those things... Once they pick up speed very quickly, uh, I'm not really sure how they go dumping it to the point where they can sit behind the Sagittaria. So, we're going to be looking for another target, and the one I've chosen is the F3D here. The reason being, is basically the closest. I've just gone full aggression because I know I'm fully down tiered, and I can know with, uh, with certainty, I can, I can sleep at night knowing that I can just do whatever the hell I want in this play, and I will probably get away with it. And that kind of goes for a full up tier as well. I don't think I have a full up tier in this video, but I certainly do have a couple of interesting clips that you might have seen in the beginning. Uh, these particular planes just shine in situations where they're a little bit under tiered, just because they can do a little bit of everything. And for me, 8.3 or 8.7 is going to be the key here. I think that at 8.3 or 8.7, you're going to be facing things that are a little bit more appropriate, things that will give you a little bit more of a challenge, and of course, things that will keep this thing in check with some better performance. Um, I played the Sea Venom, and for those of you who haven't seen the video, uh, it's a good plane, but I did play against the Sagittario a fair bit, and every time we had Sagittarios on the enemy team, we lost, and every time we had Sagittarios on our team, we won. And that's solely because this plane is just easy to play. So that begs the question, do we factor in the ease of use into the matchmaker? So if a plane is easy to get kills with, should it be a higher battle rate than a plane that is harder to get kills with? For example, uh, the English Electric Lightning is a plane that is harder to get kills with than, say, uh, some other planes at 9.7. Maybe the F3H is a good example, or the Hunter FGA-9, uh, or, you know, pick any other 9.7 that is pretty damn competent. These, the English Electric Lightning is a hard plane to play just because it's bulky, it's heavy, and it is a little bit awkward. But should that mean that it has a lower battle rating, or should it be where the best players can use it? That's an interesting discussion. Now, personally, I sit a little bit towards the better players side because I know how to abuse these sort of, sort of planes. Uh, things like the Sagittario, I'm pretty confident that I have a very high win rate in this thing. Like, above 80%. Now, I don't really have an 80% win rate in 
many other planes. I normally sit at about a 2 or 3 to 1 kill death ratio in all of my aircraft and um, anything above that is a little bit abnormal. A 66 to 70% win rate is normally where I sit as well and if this plane, I can't quite remember the win rate I have off the top of my head but I was winning a shit ton of games and pretty, pretty easily without breaking a sweat to be honest and for me having that so easy to win it's just not enjoyable after a while it'll get boring and after a while it will oversaturate the matchmaker because everyone and their mums will play this plane and then no one else will want to play anything else because all you're facing is Sagittarius all day and so what you'll have is you'll have a dead matchmaker because of a single plane and as a result I would rather that single plane suffers a little bit more even even if you had to go as extreme as 9.0 um, although I think that is too extreme uh, I think that having that increase in battle rating is going to do more for the matchmaker below it than the plane itself the plane it's fine it'll cope um, if not it'll be a little bit worse than it was but in this case here with the Sagittario I think we are going to be more than fine have a look at the way I'm just going to carve up these planes the uh, F2H Banshee doesn't even know it's coming and even if he did he couldn't do anything because I just have that much better energy retention I'm faster I have so much more on the table than he does and the only thing he can do is get behind me and bounce me and that's it so a plane like that is just insane and this plane is probably the best plane of the patch I, I know I said that with the F5 and I know I'm probably going to eat my words and say it's actually the Sagittario, but this plane is just pure insanity. It's just pure overpowered and Italian meatball glory. It's just ridiculously strong. And for me, a ridiculously strong plane is good for about five games. And then you get to a match where you're just constantly curb stomping and no one wants to deal with you anymore. So they just throw in the towel and say fuck it I'm gonna go play something else so that sets a real dangerous precedent and that's something that I would like to avoid especially with War Thunder which is a game that I really really enjoy as you can probably tell because I have like 35,000 plus games and several thousand subscribers on YouTube but anyway ladies and gents that'll do it for today thank you very much again to Opera GX for sponsoring this video sponsors like I said really help the channel out but you know what you do too with your watching liking commenting all that interaction is absolutely beautiful anyway ladies and gents thank you very much for watching take care and I'll catch you next time